Hello, this is Claudia Orengo, a graphic designer and illustrator from Barcelona. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you two ways to create seamless patterns in Photoshop. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to come to File, New, and we're going to set it up to a square. That's the best way to work. You can do any shape, but square is better for what I'm going to show you in the future. So I usually work at 3000 or 5000, it depends. But 3000 pixels will be good enough for this tutorial. And we can set up a name here. So let's do a test uh, pattern. Then you want to set it up to RGB or CMYK, depending on what you want to work with. And it doesn't matter if you keep the background transparent, white, black or any color. I'm going to set it up to white and maybe we can change it in the future. So let's say OK and we have our file here. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to import the drawings we want to work with. So in this case, I want to work with these paintings that I already have uh, cleaned up as I showed you in previous videos. If you don't know how to clean your original paintings, your scanned watercolors or whatever medium you are using, don't forget to check that video. So once I have them in a clean background like this, I'm going to select them all and drag them directly to this file. Um, Photoshop tells us right now at what size it's importing it. I'm going to say OK by pressing intro and repeat this until all my paintings are here. OK, and here in my layers panel, we can see all the drawings that we have. If you don't see the layers panel, you can see it under window layers. OK, one thing I like to do is I like to select everything and press with my right uh, click and go to rasterize layers so that now all the files are inside this document they are not linked to the original uh, files and at the end this will be less heavy this this pattern file okay so i'm gonna move everything around and if things don't move like it happens to me make sure that you have your selection tool Select it and also this check here, auto select and select layer. That's how you can easily click into something and drag it as if you were in Illustrator. So I'm gonna separate the elements just to see everything I have. I'm gonna do some zoom out and we're gonna start with the first method. So this method, I like to think that we are gonna start in a shape of a diamond. So we're going to fill this diamond shape with the paintings that we have. In this case, I need them to be smaller. So I'm going to select everything and press Command T. And by pressing Alt, I'm going to scale them down just enough so that we have room. And I'm going to start playing around with the butterflies to fill the space. Since this is just a tutorial, I'm not going to spend much time into it, but usually I like to really be careful with the spaces in between things and be sure that colors are not repeating too often, etc. But yeah, for the purpose of this tutorial, I just want to show you how we can create this shape. You see? Now maybe we could dupl duplicate some of the layers. I just press Command J and feel better the area. But that's the that's the main idea. So once we have this, we're gonna select all these layers, group them by pressing Command G or coming to the folder here, and we're gonna press with our secondary click and convert it to a smart smart object. Right now we have all these editable. So if we double click here, it will open a new file with all the group that we created and all the file, all the um, drawings. And we can, let me show you, if I move this here and I press Command S as if I was saving, 
once it's saved and we come back here it appears the changes so it's like a raw document it's very interesting to keep things like this we're gonna go back save and wait until the changes apply here okay and now I'm going to show you how you can start creating the pattern so we're gonna to come to filter other offset and it will appear this pop-up we want to have preview checked and we want to move horizontally and vertically approximately the half of your file so if it was 3000 it would be interesting to have 1500 and here the same 1500 what's doing it's separating what we had here cutting it in four slices and each one of them moving it to the opposite so this first slide would be come here this would come here this here and this here now since everything is moved all these areas in the corners are exactly matching that's the interesting thing of the offset tool and we have all this area here cleaned so that we can fill it again so i'm gonna press ok and i'm gonna come here and bring back these uh, drawings again or you can bring new ones or do the same process and bring yours from your folder press intro as we did and repeat the process with it again it, it, it doesn't matter if you are using the same or you are um, adding new ones the, the idea is just that you simply bring new objects to fill the areas and again we're gonna move them around to fill everything and some of them we will no longer need them so I'm just gonna delete some of them maybe keep things like this okay so this is how we are filling all the area you can spend as much time as you want here but this is the idea of the offset tool that you can move things around and be sure that everything is uh, in the place you want um, and everything is filled and everything is seamless so now we have our pattern ready, like our tile. Uh, we could even change the background and paint it in any color we like. Let's try with a purple one. Doesn't matter this, or you can simply delete the background and keep it transparent so that you can have the background editable. The idea is that once you have the tile as you like it, you would save this as a PSD or whatever file you want to sell. You can save it as a PNG, as a JPEG, whatever you want to use in the future. And if you want to test it in your Photoshop, all you have to do is come to Edit, Define Pattern. Now, this can have a name, Test Pattern or whatever name you want. Press OK. Now, if we do a new file, let's try another size so we can see how it applies we can use we can test the pattern in two ways the first one is with this fill tool so here you have the fill tool selected you want to come up here instead of foreground you want to select pattern now it will give you the option of which patterns you want and the last one will be yours so it will be the the one you just created you want to click here and once you come and paint it will paint with the pattern this works very well but if you want to test it in different um, proportions or you want to move the pattern around this is not allowed in the allowed in this option so i'm going to show you how you can do it we come back with command z and we come to the layer we can unblock it and come to filter pattern overlay now this will pop up this is another pattern i created so we want to come here and select the one we're working with the good thing is that this will be raw again and intelligent so you can scale it down and see what happens you can scale it up and you can even move it around and say no i just want it here so this 
you can click OK and you can always double click pattern and move it so it, it's editable. So this is how you test the patterns and this was the first um, technique to create patterns. Now I'm going to show you another technique. Let's go back to the original uh, or let's create a new one. So we start again with 3000, 3000 and let us bit the, the process. So we bring here our illustrations but in this case I'm gonna show you let's scale it down I'm gonna show you how you can create a pattern with the drawings cutting on the edges so at the beginning in the other uh, process we started with the diamond shape and we made sure that nothing was going to the borders nothing was cutting but in this case we want to work with the opposite. So imagine we want this butterfly here and this one here. I'm gonna make it uh, bigger to show you how this would work. And this one here and then that one would come down here and yeah. I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna delete the rest just to show you. So what we're working here, do we want to fill these areas? But I just positioned each one of these drawings here, leaving these areas blank because I know that this butterfly has to continue from here to here or this one has to continue from here to the opposite side and this one has to repeat in all corners. So I'm going to show you how you can do this. What you want to do is you want to, well, you, you can repeat what I did in the others, just simply rasterize the, the illustrations. But the idea is that you select the one that you know it's cutting and you need to duplicate in the other corners or in the other areas. And once you have it selected, so we have this layer selected, you can come and duplicate first this layer. So you can come to layer, duplicate or you can simply click command J and it's duplicating. Now that we have duplicated it, you want to move it, but instead of moving it with your own hand or with whatever tool you're using to move the mouse, what you want to use is the moving tool from Photoshop, which it's really intelligent and you can tell exactly how many pixels it needs to be moved. So we're gonna come here, click on the butterfly and press Command T, which is transform. So once you have this, it appears here some of the options. So you want to come to the Y and the X and move it exactly the size of your working document. So in my case, it was 3000. So I'm gonna come here and without deleting this number, I will come to the end and press plus. 3000. You see, and it's moving exactly what I needed. So now I can press intro two times because the first one is for the location and the second one is to stop uh, editing the transformation. And now we have this copied to the, to the right. So you want to come and select these two again because we want to duplicate them to the bottom. So we can select them both at the same time, press command J and by having them selected, repeat the process command T. And now we don't want to move the X, which is the horizontal. You want to move the Y. So we do the same. We come here and press plus 3000 and then intro and intro again. Now we have this duplicated. The same with this one. You want to duplicate it, command J command T and move it 3000 to the right and the same with this one to the left. So command J, command T here instead of moving it plus 3000 which would bring it really far away you want to have less 3000 because you want to move it to the left. So you want to write minus 3000. Press intro and then we have it. Okay, so in this case, filling the gaps, it's not as intuitive and easy as the other one, 
but it's it's a great way to work and you can even link the layers or select them together and move them so that you make sure they are always seamless or you can use the other method whatever works best for you i just wanted to show you these two ways to work and remember once you have your pattern created you can save it here edit define pattern and you can test it how i showed you before so i hope you found this useful let us know if you have any other tricks in photoshop to create patterns so in the next video i'm going to show you how you can create patterns in illustrator